total disbelief. We were like nine episodes on air. I was like, you're kidding. Like, I've, I've never been the darling of a network. Like, I've never had the full machine behind you. I can make summer plants as long as you <laughs> die. Those kids of mine will go on vacation. I wanted to start off with this first. A new episode of Fire Country airs on Sunday, January 29th, right after the AFC Championship game. And um, I wanted to ask, what can fans expect from this episode since it's going to be on a special night? And it looks like the crew is going to be battling a fire after uh, following a plane crash. Yes, the crew is actually going to be um, battling a fire after the biggest football game of a Sunday ever. So I think everyone's going to be so excited because they're going to be like into their wings and into their beer. (laughs) And we're just (laughs) going to be like, Oh, and now let's round it out with a little hero journey. Um, It's a great episode. It's like uh, Northern California, just showing off big old vistas that plane goes down and we have our inmate firefighters fighting right alongside Cal fire. And it's a sort of story of redemption, but they all go into this, into this big open field themselves. And it's the people that don't want to leave. It's really looking at what do you want to value? Is it your house? Is it the money you spent? Or is it your life or the people you love? Like, yeah, how do they talk you into living differently than you saw your life going? And with it being on a special night, is it possible we could see a big surprise or two? There's a couple of big surprises in there because it's on a special night and because the AFC game has so many viewers. I don't know. I don't even know if people could understand this. Like I, we're the number one new show, right? And we have about 8 million viewers a week, which is an astronomical number. And the AFC game is 20 million. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think that's happened in TV since Seinfeld, you know, like before <laughs> there was uh, yeah. like streaming. So it's a super exciting night for us. Absolutely. But in the last episode, we saw at the end of the last episode, we saw that Bodhi became a match when it comes to a kidney donation. So, and one of the big storylines is um, with your your character, Sharon, just needs a kidney transplant. So what can fans expect from Sharon from the rest of the season? You know, it's a little bit of a surprise for both of us. And as mm. my daughters say, mom, if they kill you, do we still, still get to go away this summer? <laughs> the, the constant threat of like, is it over? My own friends are like, are you going to die on there? I'm like, well, they're not going to tell me. <laughs> yeah. So Bodhi is a match. And I love that they are addressing what it is to have live donors for people with chronic right. kidney disease. And I love that my character's reaction is, I am not taking my kid's kidney. Now she may lose that argument, but that's really where she stands up. Like, how do you take an organ out of somebody else's body and, and, and live to thank them? Like, what is that relationship like forever? Absolutely. And one of the things like about Sharon is she has compassion, but she's also a person you don't want to mess with. So how much fun have you, um, how much fun you had uh, playing the role of Sharon this, this season? I have had so much fun playing the role of Sharon and being a girl boss. And sometimes I can get a little hard in there. One time I had to go in to do the ADR, like the sound wasn't quite working. And they said, could you just make this a little softer? Because you're really going at her here. (laughs) I was like, oh, okay. I love my job that they let her have all of that spice and me and my husband get to fight. And every time I see my son, it's it's a little codependent. And how can I save him? Which is not really the mother's job. (laughs) So (laughs) we're like all in each other's hula hoop. We're like all in there inside each other's brains, which is my favorite part of the gig. And you mentioned Bodhi, he's played by Max Terriot, um, who created the series. And I got to talk to him before um, the show aired. So what was it like working with him on screen and also behind the scenes as a boss? It's so fun having a boss who's young enough to play your child because it's a crapshoot. It's going to either be adorable or it's going to be a nightmare. He is super adorable. I think he's my favorite number one on the show ever. He's just a really good natural leader because he makes room for everyone. And he really knows this story. I mean, as a writer, I think most networks want to find one voice, like one true authentic voice telling their own story. And 
that really is Max. Like, this is how he grew up. This is what he knows. His friends from high school yeah. are our consultants. Like, it, it's really like living inside his world. And thank gosh, they are lovely people. Absolutely. And with Fire Country being the show it is, it has a share of challenging scenes. Uh, what would you say has been the biggest challenge uh, filming the series? Weather. Yeah. We are not that that TV show that's inside six days a week and outside too. We are outside six days a week. In the summer, it was very, very hot and it's really cold now. So <laughs> most people don't know that Northern California gets cold. And it was three degrees outside at some point. And I was in a t-shirt and a little bolero jacket and I had already had the flu and I was working mm. through bronchitis at that time. And then I had a double ear infection and I was writing to a writer's like... <laughs> It has to be winter. If you're going to make a shoot in Canada, please write winter in the scripts. And now we're doing winter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So um, you mentioned how the show averages 8 million viewers a week. Obviously, it's doing well in ratings. Obviously, it's doing well at the time slot on Friday. So why do you think people are drawn to the show? I think we're looking for a little bit more truth in our stories. Like we don't want just a good guy who's doing good things. And the character that Max plays starts every scene in an orange jumpsuit. You know, like he, he has to present with the worst thing he's ever done yeah. and win everybody back from that. So there's like a, a natural humility in there and, an, and a like universal truth of we all have those things we don't want to lead with. How does this guy keep doing this if that's what he leads with? Of course. And one last question for me before I let you go is Fire Country has been renewed for a second season. So what was your reaction when you learned the news that um, there was going to be a season two? Total disbelief. We were like nine episodes on air. I was like, you're kidding. Like, I've, I've never been the darling of a network. Like, I've never had the full machine behind you. I can make summer plants as long as you're <laughs> Die, those kids of mine will go on vacation. Yeah. It's just lovely to know what you're doing. And you it lets us all recommit. Like when you're dating, <laughs> it's like that. Do, do we like each other? Do we not like each other? Is it on? Is it off? When it's on, it's like you're all the way in. So it, it's been a joy. Well, I've enjoyed this first season. Looking forward to the episode on Sunday. Diane, thank you so much for your time. I do appreciate it. Congratulations on the show and continue success to you. <laughs>